In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we come around this altar, we are mindful of God's presence in our life. And as indeed we come around this altar, we must also acknowledge our sins. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, and to my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have, have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in, in my words, in what I have done and what, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, to, to pray for me to, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let 
Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord 
Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sisters and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. He said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, So ye how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something that this man would not have died? So Jesus perturbed again came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you will always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead men came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this is definitely one of those Gospels that is, uh, I think, very appropriate for us to hear during this moment. I think it's also very appropriate for us to put it in the context of the fifth Sunday of Lent, and especially with what's going on in our world. This is certainly one of those Gospels where the feelings and the emotions are palpable. It's definitely one of those moments where we can see and we can feel, and we can empathize from all different ranges and emotions. We see and we can hear the tension of Martha and the anguish of her voice when she says to the Lord, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We can see the sadness in Jesus when he weeps. And we can even see in Mary the sense of kind of almost avoidance because she's not there with Martha and Jesus, but she's the one who stays behind, in a sense, to try to keep herself removed from the whole situation. And that's how it is, I think, in our current climate, in our world with the pandemic going on, that there can be a variance in a range of emotions. There's sadness, there's fear, there's weeping, there's a feeling of unknown. But what I think is so very beautiful and I think something that we can reflect on this week is that small exchange between Martha and Jesus. When she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
because I think that's been my prayer too, and I think it might have been even be your prayer. Lord, if you had been here, would we not be dealing with this? But I love the response of the Lord, that the Lord weeps. Because that response of weeping means that the Lord is present in all of this. And the Lord's words to Martha when he challenges her, he says, do you not believe this? Martha says, yes, Lord, I believe. That there's a faith that Martha has, that she places her trust in the Lord. And I think that's where we have to begin to seek solace and say, if we have to place our trust in somebody, who are we going to put our trust in? First and foremost, as a family of faith, we put our trust in the Lord. Because it's the Lord who's going to inspire those to work for our cure. It's going to be the Lord who gives the graces and the gifts that are needed for courage and fortitude during this time. And I think it's precisely, I don't even think I know, that it's the Lord who's going to see us through this pandemic. And yes, even though we may feel a whole range of emotions, we're going to feel sadness. There will be weeping. There will be questioning. There will be a sense of fear, or we may even be like Mary to have a sense of avoidance. The Lord is still going to be with us in the midst of all that. And then it's going to be those moments where we allow ourselves to go through the human conditions, the human emotions, and when we come out on the other side of this, we'll be able to see how God was present in the midst of all this how God was inviting us to something deeper that we may not realize now, how the Lord is walking with us on this journey. And so then as we're getting ready to close the Lenten season with this fifth Sunday and get ready to slide into Holy Week and the mysteries of Jesus' death and resurrection into new life, let's also see how the Lord is inviting us to draw deeper into a relationship with him, that in these intense days, and I mean intense days in every sense of the word, intense days as we're coming to the end of our Lenten journey, intense days because it seems the world is changing minute by minute and hour by hour, and the rise of those who are suffering and who are sick and who are dying keep rising, as the intensity of life comes, Let's see how we can find the Lord in all this. Because the Lord is indeed with us. And the Lord will never forsake us. But God is continually allowing us to draw deeper in love with him, even in spite of whatever is going on. And so whatever emotions that you're feeling, they're okay. But the Lord will be with us in whatever range of feelings or emotions we may have if it's sadness, if it's tears, if it's weeping, if it's avoidance. But the Lord is still with us this day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Mindful of God's presence in our life, we present our petitions to the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Cardinal Supic, and all the leaders of the Church, that they may continue to guide the Church during this unprecedented time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our government officials, 
and we pray for members of the CDC and government organizations who work feverishly for a cure and treatment from the coronavirus. May the Lord bless them and may the Lord continue to give them courage during this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the members of this community here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel who are afraid or who feel isolated or alone or have a whole range of emotions. May they know of the Lord's presence in, the light, in their life and may the Lord be with them during this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the members of our community and the members of our great city of Chicago who are sick, either with the coronavirus or the ailments of daily life. May the Lord be with them, and may Jesus, who is the divine physician, heal their every ill. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, and all those on the front lines and are working in our hospitals and doing essential labor. May they continue to be strengthened by the Lord, and may they know of the love and prayers of this community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially those who have succumbed to the coronavirus and those members of our community who have passed on. May the Lord welcome them into the light of his face, and may they know his love and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for your intentions and for the intentions that we hold within the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would hear and answer these prayers, for we make them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord is the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he loved for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life, through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Felis sunt celi et terra gloria tua, Osana in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomini domini, Osana in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for Europe. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassionate, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, misere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, misere nobis. On your Tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.